The law of compounding is one of the most powerful things and if you know how to leverage that, then you are absolutely going to crush it in whatever industry you're in. Five ways to become a top 1% appointment setter. This is a very competitive industry, boys. In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you five ways to get above the competition. If you're a true savage, like if you're, if you're one of the, those guys, you're, like, you're on your villain arc, you're grinding this year, and you want to make appointment setting the opportunity that changes your life forever, then implement these five tips and you are gonna absolutely crush it in the appointment setting space. Trust me, there's so many new guys getting into this space right now. It's starting to blow up a little bit. And all of these guys getting into this space are honestly such pussies. Like there's so many like soft guys that have come from drop shipping or, or whatever that think they're gonna get into appointment setting and just crush it straight away. This is the high ticket sales industry. This is an industry where the weak are gonna get filtered out and the savages are going to get filthy rich. Savages in this space are, are gonna make it to the top. They're gonna succeed. And if you're one of those people, then watch this video to the end. Implement these five tips and this is gonna help you get to the top of your market. Tip number one is to do more volume. Of course, you hear me talk about this all the time. So, volume is super important, boys. Not only are you going to book more calls from sending more messages, but you are also going to get better at booking calls from sending more messages. You're gonna get, as you get more practice, you're gonna be booking more calls. More reps equals more skills, and that's what you need to be focused on. If you are new to appointments, there, unless you've been, let's say you've been doing this for less than a year, your main focus right now is on doing so much volume that it would be unreasonable for you not to master the skill. That's your number one priority right now. As you do more reps, you're going to build more skills. And obviously, if you want to get to the top of the industry, you need the best skills. You need the top 1% skills. So focus on reps, focus on, on uh, building your skills. So you're going to book more calls from sending more messages. If you're sending 50 messages a day and you're booking, I know this is never going to happen, but hypothetical numbers to keep it easy. You're sending 50 messages a day, you're booking 50 calls. If you're sending 100 messages a day, then you're booking 100 calls. That's what you think because you're doubling your input and you're getting double the amount of results. So if you want to make more money, just double your volume. That makes sense. But if that, that's without taking into considering that you're going to be gaining more skills as you're doing more reps. So instead of booking, uh, sending 100 messages and booking 100 calls, you'd actually be sending 100 messages and maybe booking 101 calls. I know the maths, that it doesn't make sense, but don't worry about the numbers so much, but just focus on the percentage increase. Uh, I've got a little graph here that explains this a little bit more. So if your competition sends 100 messages per day, then you should send 200 messages per day. Again, if you are savage, fuck your competitors. You're built different and you're gonna do whatever it takes to win. You're gonna do more than them. If they're doing 100, fuck them. You're built different. You're in the office until 11 p.m. every single night, doubling everything that they're doing. If you keep that up on a long enough time frame, then you're, it's unreasonable for you not to be a master at this skill, right? If you are generally, like adopt that savage mentality, you're willing to do what other people are not willing to do, then you're gonna get the results that they don't deserve. That is how, that's how making money online tends to work. If you do the things that they're not willing to do, you're gonna get the results that they don't deserve. Going back to what I was saying earlier, this is a little, graph that I have drawn, a little diagram that explains the concept of not only are you, is you sending more messages per day directly correlated to your income, but also the, the learning, the learning aspects that improving at your skills is also going to have a significant difference in your income. And I'm going to explain. If that sounds complicated and if this looks complicated, it's not in a minute. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain. So time, this is a graph. So this, the higher it goes, the more money you're earning because this is your income, like monthly, weekly, whatever. And this is time. So years, months, years, whatever. This is time, this is income. So let's say you are sending 50 messages per day. You are this gray line here. This is your income. Let's say you send 100 messages per day. Now what you would expect is for this dotted line to be your new income because this is the gap. This is this is the gap between 50 messages and zero messages. So you're doubling it. So it should be the same gap, and it should go to this dotted line here. You're 2xing your imports. So you're 2xing your outcome. Is what you would think, but in reality, it's not 2x your outcome. It's more like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. It's more like two. We're gonna say it's more like 2.2x your outcome because. As I said earlier, if you're sending double the amount of messages, now you are now learning, you are learning at two times the rate. You are improving at two times the rate. And as you are improving, you are going to be increasing your conversion rate to go on and book more calls. So instead of it being a that like doubling, it's gonna be more like 2.3. So as you can see here, if I if I just move if I just move everything out of the way, all these arrows and stuff, this is 50 messages per day. This is where you'd expect 100 messages per day, but you can see that the, the line is moving upwards because as you are learning and as you are improving, 
you are starting to book more calls. So in reality, let's say you are making, let's say you're making 50K a year here. Let's say you are making 100K a year here on the, on the, um, on the dotted line. So let's say that this is 50, this is, this is 50, this is 100. Then the yellow line might be, if we are going through this, the same, the same maths, then this is gonna be 110K per year. And on a long enough time frame, that 110k a year, like okay, already you're making an extra 10 grand, like that's great. But on a long enough time frame, that's gonna keep on building, that's gonna keep on growing, you're gonna hit the compound effect, and then in a couple of years' time, you're so far past your competitors. That's how to get to top the top one percent. That that compounding effect over time, that those small difference, those small little percentages on a long enough time frame is gonna completely separate you from everyone else in the industry. So this diagram, so you've gone from 50 messages a day to 100 messages a day and you've already separated yourself from everyone like significantly over twice you've all, over doubled their their results and now let's say you go from 100 messages per day to 200 messages per day now again if we are applying the same maths here you would expect to it, it to be significant like you'd expect it to 2x your income and this is what 2xing your income would look like so you've taken this this the space between this the space between this the space between this and added two on top so this is what you'd expect to be at so this would be 200k a year you'd expect to be at 200k a year if you quadrupled your input but in reality so now what we're gonna do to find out the, the result after we've actually factored in the learning difference, like you're gonna be improving and therefore as you learn more, you're gonna be higher conversion rates and etc. After we factor in all that, so we're gonna get 110, we're gonna times it again by 2.2. 242k, 242k a year. So, in, like, by quadrupling your income, you've not earned quadruple the amount of money like you would be at 200k. But with the compound effect, you you actually earned an extra 42,000 pound per year. And this, if you do this year after year after year after year, imagine the compounding effect because the compounding, like, compounding is one of the most powerful laws in the world. The law of compounding is one of the most powerful things. And if you know how to leverage that, then you are absolutely going to crush it in whatever industry you're in. We're going to crush it. So that is the power of volume. That just shows like volume alone is enough to crush your competition, to be honest. If you're just willing to work harder than everyone else on a long enough time frame, you will succeed. Simple as. So... Again, it is, this is like, it's a big commitment to obviously quadruple and double like the workload of everyone else. But if you're a young guy, if when we're young, if we are not grinding, then what the hell are we even doing? This is our chance to set that foundation. If you want to like literally make appointment setting your thing, your life changing opportunity, then this is what you need to be willing to do. You need to be willing to put in the hard work. When you're first getting started, you're gonna be doing a lot of outbound. You're not gonna have a lot of skills. You're not gonna have a lot of credibility. This is your time to grind it out and build that foundation, boys. On to tip number two, be more organized. Again, uh, this, this is still, do more volume, be more organized. These are things that average people are not willing to do. Being organized sucks. I hate being, it's so annoying to update spreadsheets every two seconds. It's so annoying, but honestly, this is again, that stuff that your competitors don't want to do. Average people don't want to do this stuff. Uh, and therefore, if you can do the, the boring stuff, the small details, you are gonna crush your competition. Track the fuck out of everything, boys, everything. Let's, let's go over here. So literally treat the CRM system like your life depends on it. Treat your CRM like your life depends on it. Like it's, it's gonna make such a big difference. From follow-ups, it's gonna help you track your follow-ups because when you, if you're sending 200 messages a day and you're doing your volume, you're gonna lose so many messages. You're gonna forget about so many conversations. So tracking everything is gonna help make sure that you are maximizing, you're, you're squeezing them all of the juice out of the lemon. You're, you're maximizing your leads. You're maximizing your conversion rates. You're doing your follow-ups and you're making sure you are as efficient as possible. It's gonna make a big difference, boys. And follow-ups as well. It's another thing that a lot of new appointment setters neglect. Follow-ups, boys. It's, follow ups is such a gold mine. Follow-ups is like the easiest way to make money in appointment setting, to be honest. That like, follow-ups are just so sick. And if you've got a good system in place that is literally going to remind you when to follow up, that's gonna do all the hard work for you. You've just got to make the, the put the small amount of effort in to stay organized and, and boom, you've got an, a sick follow-up system. Uh, your follow-up list is gonna keep on growing and growing and growing. And if you have a good CRM like this one, so my, this is the CRM that I use. If you want a copy of this, by the way, then just shoot me a message on Instagram. Send me a message saying CRM and I'll send it over. If you want a copy of this, it literally reminds me when to follow up. So let's say 
I followed up with someone like on the 20th, right? The last time I messaged someone was on the 20th. I'll write it down in the CRM. So this is my name. I write it down in the CRM. So yeah, the last time I messaged Temi was on the 20th and maybe I want to follow up with him on the, thir on the 31st. So if the last message I sent to that person was over a week ago, this is going to go red. And that is going to be like my reminder. I need to send them another message. So I'm going to have loads of messages on here. Last time I messaged this guy was the 21st, 21. Uh, 23. The last time I messaged this guy was the 25th. That's not going to go red. You get the idea. It's going to literally remind me when I've not messaged someone in over a week. It's going to go red and it's going to tell me a big flashing red light that I need to message these guys. If I write something on the follow up, like today, I wrote 31st of the 5th, that says that it is due. I'm due to message this guy today because it's gone green. If it's something is overdue, say I forgot to send someone a message, then it's going to go red. Let's say it is in the future, then it's going to be white. I don't need to worry about that for now. This is the importance of a CRM. Like I said, if you don't have a good CRM system, this is literally the one that I use and my appointment set is used for my business. So if you want a copy of this to download, then shoot me a message on Instagram, message me CRM and I'll send this over. Um, but honestly, boys, yeah, you need you need to be tracking your data gonna help you like if let's say you're doing a lot of outbound and you've got some sort of value ladder then it's gonna help you keep track of all that like remind you again follow-ups another important like part of of being more organized is data doesn't lie you you can use the, all of the data that you are tracking to identify where you need to make adjustments and again this is going to literally explode your income if only 30 percent of the people that you uh, propose to book a call with so you send the calendly or whatever and only 30 percent of those actually go on to to book a call you've got the data there the data you've got it in the spreadsheet or whatever and you can use that data to identify which areas you need to improve on you can see on the spreadsheet okay this is where i'm struggling in the business only 30 percent of the people are actually booking calls if you can change that number you can, you can 2x that 30% to 60% for example you've literally doubled your income and you would have never known that if you're if you wasn't tracking the data you wouldn't have known which area you need to improve on in your business in order to keep scaling your income if you if you, you didn't have the data to tell you that the data doesn't lie when you're using your CRM system like look you can you can have let's say you had nine calendly sent and only three of those actually booked a call then now you can see it you can see it right there broad daylight okay this is a problem I'm send, sending calendly's but I'm not booking calls and now you know what to improve on because if you can get that number doubled you can get that to six calls calls but then look you've just doubled your your income and you would have never known that that was a problem if you didn't have it here in the check in, in the spreadsheet so tracking your numbers is the most efficient way to find problems find where you're going wrong with your appointment setting review your approach make the necessary adjustments to keep growing your income treat your crm like the life your life depends on it it's super boring spreading out uh, filling out spreadsheets all day but they are not willing to do this work so that's why you need to be willing to do this work if you want to get ahead do what they're not willing to do the next step, be less scripted. This comes down to the actual appointment setting skill. People want to feel like you care about their problems and they don't want to feel like they are talking to a robot. They don't want to feel like they're replying to some AI or automated messages. They want to, they want, if, if you are selling a high ticket offer, you're on appointment set, you're selling a high ticket offer, they need to trust you. They need to trust you because you're going to charge them a lot of money. So they need to trust you. They need to feel like they are, their needs are being accommodated for. Otherwise, they're not going to buy. It's, it's as simple as that. Even if you manage to get them on the call, they're not going to make a sale so you need to be doing your job as an appointment setter to warm up these leads and how you're going to warm up these leads is by personalizing the conversation personalize the conversation to actually connect with your prospects this is going to lead to a lot more calls booked and a lot more sales made so even once they've booked the call is actually going to help your closer increase the conversion rates how do you actually have more personalized conversations ask lots of questions actually listen to their needs and their concerns always acknowledge what the other person says and use their language so ask lots of questions don't interrogate them like make sure to ask permission to ask questions etc ask relevant questions don't interrogate them but it's important that you're asking questions so that they understand that you are actually trying to help if you don't ask any questions and you don't know anything about them and you just try to sell them something then it's going to be very clear that you don't care about them and their problems 
it's going to be very clear that you just want money and you just want them to buy you don't care about their situation just just buy my course there you go asking questions one is going to help you identify like positioning that you should take to actually like the, the most efficient way to get them on a call and the most efficient way to actually sell to them it's going to give you an idea of if they're actually a good fit for your product or service but it's also going to help on their end it's going to help them feel like you care about them actually listen to their needs and concerns don't just ask them questions and not listen again use the crm go into notes note down their pain points point situation goals like note like all of the things that they're telling you note it down and then you can use this moving forward in in the conversation for your closer of course you're speaking to so many people on a daily basis you're going to forget some small details so make sure to track that in the crm system always acknowledge what the other person says if you're asking question 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 make sure to actually acknowledge their reply to the question like oh that's awesome big respects for doing that Oh, what 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 have you tried previously in the past? Oh yeah, I've done drop shipping courses in the past. Didn't work very well. Ah, uh, that sucks, bro. I've tried drop shipping courses as well, and it didn't it didn't work out for me. What was the main reason uh, you didn't achieve success in drop shipping or whatever? Make sure to like have a conversation. The same way you're going to speak to your boy you can include like your personal experience. You can give you like some personal in input. You can give some free value. You, like you can make suggestions, or even if it's just something like ah. Uh, gotcha man even if it's just something that like, oh, i got you man that like, just acknowledge what they tell you you know it's gonna make the conversation seem a lot more friendly a lot more natural the last one that i want to talk about if you're an experienced point appointment setter then you'll know this but always use their language try to use the the lingo of your target audience my target audience right my target audience uh, if you message me on instagram then this is the language i'm going to use i know my target audience is men only it's a men only program where I guarantee results for young guys that want to get into appointment setting. So the young guys that are on self-improvement, they probably listen to people like Andrew Tate and Hamza, etc. So I can call these guys bro. I can I can talk to them about self-improvement. I can talk to them about the gym grind. Might even spell gym like this. Because I know my target audience. I can call them G, etc. I know my target audience very well. So use their language. If you're in a specific space, like you're in a specific niche and your target audience have got a, a particular way of speaking, then speak like that because it's gonna seem a lot more familiar. Like when you're talking to me, I'm gonna call you bro a lot. I'm gonna uh, lots of bros in there, keep things casual. Use the language of your target audience to make them feel more comfortable. To assume familiarity, that's what it's gonna do. So that is tip number three. So on to tip number four. Ask more questions. Again, just like I said on the previous slide, you need to ask questions. Very important in appointment setting and in sales in general. Asking questions gives you an understanding about how you can actually help the prospect or if they even need help to begin with. And you're not just trying to sell to anyone. You want to help people that your job in sales is a professional problem solver. You're here to solve problems. If they don't have a problem, then how are you gonna solve a problem? You're not. That's an unqualified lead. You can move on to the next person. Or you can keep digging, try to find a problem, try to amplify a pain point, etc. It shows that you care for their problems. It gives you an understanding of the correct positioning that you need to, to use to get them on that call. And it also helps you filter out the bad leads. What I mean by the correct positioning to get them on the call is if they've got a very spe that specific problem and it's a big pain point for them, then you can use that pain point when actually proposing the call. Would you would you be opposed to having a quick 15 minute chat to see if I can help you out with problem X? And you've now positioned yourself with their pain point that you, that you gained from asking them a question. You've positioned yourself correctly to now book them on a call is that you've changed your strategy to accommodate for their problems and that is going to increase your conversion rate significantly so different types of questions qualifying questions probing questions background questions just ask questions boys <laughs> that's the moral of the story just ask questions qualifying questions is this person in a position to buy and would they be a good fit these are your questions like can they afford it are they interested are they the decision maker so uh, you'd ask like how much can you invest in something like this? What's your budget? Where are you from? What makes you want to get into appointment setting? Like the, this, these are your qualifying questions. Probing questions, these are questions that ask about their current situation, their desired situation, their feelings, their thoughts, their emotions, and their motivation, stuff like that. This is how you're going to identify their pain point. You can amplify that if necessary, and you're gonna identify things like their goals, for example. And now, again, these are things that 
make note of it in your CRM system. Your closer can use this information to actually sell them. You can use this information to position yourself correctly to actually increase your conversion rates like I spoke about before. Background questions, these are about their past experiences that have led them to this point. What have they tried in the past? What didn't work out for them? And this is gonna give you a better understanding on how you can help and what your selling point is. I get guys that come to me, they've tried drop shipping courses, for example, it didn't work before. I'll ask them, what tried what side hustles have you tried in the past? They'll tell me. Be like, oh, okay, like what but what how why, how come that, that didn't work out for you? Oh, have you uh, did you buy any courses for this? And I'll ask questions about what they've done previously. They will tell me exactly why it didn't work. Oh, I thought the business model was too saturated and I didn't have any private support from my mentor or something like that. That is now my positioning to get them on the call and to sell to them again. Appointment settings not saturated like all the other bullshit, bro, and um, yeah, I, I put my personal time into each and every one of my students. That's a very important part. Like I, I know I can now sort, like fix the mistakes that their previous company made to then actually sell them on my company. It's like if you're selling like gas or something like, okay, like, um, how like usually if you're selling gas is because they they want to get a better price so uh, how much is your current gas company charging you oh that's that's a, that's ridiculous rates we can do it way cheaper than that right is the reason why you'd be asking background questions so that's just an idea for you boys ask lots of questions is the moral of the story don't particularly worry about the names of the questions but just wanted to share that if you want to be a top one percent appointment there you need to ask questions Next, be super consistent. Of course, this is a bit of a boring tip. It's a bit boring, it might seem obvious, but generally, this is gonna set you apart. This is gonna set you apart. If you've got a savage mentality, you're a man, you're, you're, you're super motivated to get to the top of your space, then consistency is key. Everything that I just mentioned, do it every single day, and on a long enough time frame, you will get the results that you deserve. And it's as simple as that. Anyone can go and watch this video, go make a couple of changes, and then slip up back into their old ways after a week or two. That's what everyone does, to be honest. Everyone, they'll go on YouTube, they'll start a new side hustle, two weeks later they quit. They'll get into a new side hustle, they'll start making money. Three weeks in, um, three months in even, three months in they've started to make a little bit of money, they're comfortable, they've quit their job, they're comfortable, and then they just stop pushing. If you're a savage, then you're gonna take this all on board and you're gonna apply it into your long-term appointment setting journey. You're gonna be doing this for the years to, to, to come. You're not gonna get comfortable. You're not, not gonna get soft. You're not gonna go back into your old lazy ways. You're gonna keep doing that volume. You're gonna keep organizing everything. You're gonna keep tracking. You're gonna keep following up. You're gonna keep practicing uh, to, to be less scripted. You're gonna keep asking questions and you're gonna take all of this on board. The compound effect is going to take place and uh, hopefully I'll see you at the top. That's what I want from this video, boys. Hopefully, you found a lot of value in this. If you found value in this video and you want my personal help, you want my personal private mentorship in order to scale your income through appointment setting, whether you're a beginner just getting started in this space, or maybe you've been in this space for a couple of years and you want to take that next step, make sure to click the link below this video, fill out the, fill out the questions, and we'll have a quick chat to see if this is something that I can help you out with. Thank you so much for watching again, boys. Make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Let me know any more videos that you want to see. Uh, like I'm always like paying attention to like my comments and my messages on Instagram. So I'm, I'm always looking for new videos to make. I want to provide the best content possible for you boys. All right. Thanks for watching, boys. Keep grinding.